Hi there, my name's Dude That's Wholesome. I am a VA slash ASM artist on YouTube with uh, over 100,000 subscribers. I today would like to provide you with 10 do's and do nots as a VA on YouTube. Now I am specializing in the anime side of things. If you're an ASMR channel that shows your face, this probably isn't for you, but if you're more on the anime side of things, the role plays, the audios, then this video will be for you. So just a disclaimer that these are all my opinions and this is directly related to audio role play. As I said, this is my area of expertise, so I cannot comment on other VA subjects. I'm gonna talk to you, the viewer, as if you've just started your channel, but you're a little lost on what to do. Um, so this is just a quick rundown. Please understand that my perspective is a female doing these things. If you are a male channel, please have different expectations and please be very grounded with your expectations. I don't want you to give up on your dreams or anything like that. Just be realistic. Okay, that's all I ask. My first do for you is that when you're starting out, find out what you enjoy doing and what makes you feel good. Every time you're practicing something, you are constantly learning. It might feel like you're doing the same in, same out. Oh, that, that video is similar. You're learning how to say, do your delivery better, how to read off a script better. Um, you're not gonna come out of the floodgates with a head start. It takes time to learn everything from scratch. Seriously, listen to an audio I produced right at the start. Uh, so. Are you going to tell me what's on your mind, or do I have to ask why I found you alone? Outside, staring into the void with an empty look and- And now listen to how I do a delivery. You want to stay? Oh my gosh. I love you. I love you so much. Don't ever leave me, baby. You can clearly tell from the first clip I'm reading off a script word for word, not sure how to do the delivery. It takes time to practice. It's not an overnight thing. It's like if you want to be an artist, you, you aren't, you're not born with natural talent. Artists have spent many a year trying to produce this stuff, you know? I'm three years strong in producing content and only recently I've been able to take on projects that haven't seriously affected my health. I would specifically look for role plays as well that match your voice. Listen to my voice and then look at my content. I'm doing tomboy, I'm doing goth, I'm doing best friend. I'm not doing cutesy girly girl bimbo type stuff because my voice does not match that, okay? And that's perfectly fine that I can't do that. It helps your videos if it doesn't clash with your voice. A lot of people get hung up on their voice and I think you might be putting yourself in roles that aren't applicable to you. For example, if I wanted to role play a bimbo, this voice ain't it. It's not a bimbo. I don't sound ditzy. I don't sound dumb, you know? However, on the same hand, it doesn't mean you should never push yourself out of your comfort zone. If you never push yourself, you'll never learn, you'll never know type thing. Just keep at it and get into a nice flow and a nice rhythm. Remember, everything you do is experience. Think of it like a video game. My first don't for you guys is you might be tempted as a new creator to advertise on other people's channels that are similar. I know you might be tempted. Like, for example, you might want to comment like, hey, I made a role play just like this. Please come check me out. I'm going to be really harsh when I say this. This is so unbelievably rude and you will often be met with a lot of negativity from the creator. This happens to me often. I instantly block the comments from the channels. It might be a hard pill to swallow, but I do not make content online just for you to come under it and self-advertise your stuff. I cannot explain how incredibly disrespectful that is. And honestly, it's not a good thing to do. It's really rude to do when I want to see how the comments went, did they enjoy the roleplay and got feedback for me. And then I have three different channels try to be sly in the comments. Like it's, it's obvious. It's painfully obvious if you're trying to hint for your content. For example, saying, I love tomboy roleplays. You really inspired me to make my own. This is self-advertising disguised as a comment. Another example I've seen is a content creator making a side account to make it look like it's not them self-advertising and then copying and pasting the same message all over my videos. That gets picked up by the spam filter. Don't do it. It is just, eh, it's not the way to do it. It's not the way to organically grow. However, going off of that point, my second do for you is do approach other content creators with respect and understand that they're individuals. Now, this one's a little bit strange with like the angle that I'm coming at it from, but just because we both have the same job 
it does not mean that we're automatically going to be best friends. That's like saying all bank managers in the entire world are going to know each other. You know, all carpenters are going to know each other. Like, it's a very weird assumption, but I have had that assumption made and I've had um, content creators instantly think we're best friends and try to break that stranger barrier. Like, I would happily say I am acquaintances with everyone that I've collabed with. If you would like to befriend a content creator, that's perfectly, perfectly okay. But don't be salty if you don't get anywhere with someone. As I said, I've had the pleasure of collabing with people and so many girls, but I think all of them literally understand that I'm happy to remain acquaintances. There's nothing wrong with that in any shape or form. Please apply this to fellow VA creators. You do not simply get a pass into someone's personal life just because you make the same kind of content. The second don't I have for you, this is a hard one to navigate, but not everyone is your friend. This especially comes with your audience. Trust me, I have made my mistakes in the past. I have had enough. Um, it's a sad thing to say, but unfortunately, they're just straight up, there's some mentally unhinged people that have access to the internet and will become fixated on you or randomly resentful of you. You can do nothing wrong and people will still make up rumors, talk bad about you, talk behind your back, have speculations about you. Unfortunately, if you're serious about becoming a content creator, you have to suck it up if you want to keep going and the best advice is just don't acknowledge it. You've heard it from everyone, but honestly, it's real advice. If you do not participate and put yourself in harm's way of reading that, then it's not going to bother you. Just, you know, focus on you. Stay in your lane. That's that's the, the common saying. If you get any unsettling comments, send them to the comment void. On YouTube, you can hide people's comments forever. They do not get a notification so they can continue to, you know, waste their time commenting on your video all day long saying da 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 they don't have an inclination that you've muted them. So use it, okay? This comes from more if you do participate in DMs with fans. I, I, I so heavily suggest against it, but do, do your thing. If they're asking for real personal details, that is, it's so unbelievably, it's such a big red flag, but do not ever, ever use your real name, real location, none of this stuff. I'm telling you now, make a fake persona, fake name, fake birthday. Do not even give out your birthday, like your real birthday. You might be tempted to celebrate your real birthday. Don't do it, okay? I'm telling you now, listen to what I say. <laughs> my, my word is golden. You will get no better advice here. No one is entitled to your personal information and please do not be a naive. My goodness, do not give people the benefit of the doubt, okay? Okay. <laughs> So that conversation kind of extends into a deeper point I want to get across to you, but I'll give you a really quick rundown and bullet points so, you know, you're not going to click off. Before you start any kind of content creation, I want you to use a completely new VA name. It is unrelated to any social media you have ever made before, not a nickname. So if you're called Bear123 on Instagram, I don't want you to call yourself Bear123 ASMR Audios. Don't do it. Start completely fresh. You have never touched before, never created it before. Make the account new. Make the email new. Do not repurpose an old account for this stuff, okay? Okay. <laughs> if you're serious and your goal is to become successful in the long term of supporting yourself, full-time VA work, then I would recommend, I cannot emphasize this, delete your social media under your legal name and scrub yourself clean off the internet. No photos, none of this shit. Literally, I could not get an OF account because I have done this step. And OF required me to have real social media under my name, which I do not, so... Kaput. But yes, I heavily recommend this. It is not all sunshines and daisies. If you consume this kind of content, you have seen creators talk about this all the time, of people overstepping boundaries, people being stalkers, people being harassers. Don't give them ammo. Delete your shit now if you are serious. I don't care if you message your little Mima <laughs> on Farmville with little fucking energies or whatever it is. Delete that shit. It is not more important than your safety. If you are serious about becoming a VA, delete it. If you're not serious, then just completely disregard everything you're hearing because you're not serious. You're not dedicated. Delete all that shit! If you're asked for personal information, people get curious, but it is beyond creepy. It is 
it is just not a good sign. If anyone's genuinely asking for your personal information, eh, <coughs> block, ban, whatever, mute. They ask what your name is, where you come from, your birthday. Fake it. Fake it all. There is nothing wrong and there is nothing awkward for saying, no, I'm good. If someone asks you you're, and they're like, oh, why, why aren't you giving me an answer? Literally timestamp this video, send it to their fucking ass because they're being a little creepster right now. There is no, like, any content creator I've ever collabed with, none of us know each other's real names because it's not relevant. So why would a fan need to know your name? Okay, you gotta, you gotta start thinking. Safety first, boys. Safety first. Okay, last one of this point. And not everyone's gonna like this. I personally feel that you should not be a content creator if you were under the age of 18. Now, before, before you, you click off, you cannot legally have a PayPal account. You cannot legally have an AdSense account. You cannot legally make money for yourself online at this stage if you're under 18 when it comes to this kind of creation, this content creation. Now, None of us were mature at the age of 18 and heck, I still ain't. I still, I'm over 18. I'm still not mature. I would heavily suggest being 18 or over, but feel free to disregard this advice because what do I know? Totally not giving you absolute gold over here. Okay. My third to do for you, please consider visually crediting your artist on screen and your script writer on screen if you're using a script writer. I have made the terrible mistake of only doing it in descriptions and especially with my older content. So all I can do is link for credit. However, you may or may not know when it comes to YouTube monetization, if you link, for example, to Pixiv, you can be demonetized because if you go on Pixiv and look hard enough, you can get some content that isn't so family friendly. So YouTube monetization policies say that you're linking back to this stuff when in reality you're not. So please consider switching credit on screen. It will save you so much time. And if for whatever reason you have to scrub your links clean, all of that, your descriptions clean, it's already sorted and nice and easy. It's not an issue. Okay. My third don't is don't take other people's scripts. Now, no, 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 no. That looks a bit strange, but on the surface, I have been asked multiple times if someone can recreate a video of mine. They quite literally wanted to take my video and say it word for word. I make scripts, so I have unique content offered on my channel, okay? When it comes to script writing, chances are you might not be up to scratch. I wasn't either. See if I can put in a little screenshot of this is when I started versus this is what I'm doing now. If you are struggling for scripts, you can use public access scripts. Please do not word for word copy someone else's video. That is so unbelievably... I'm not sure what the word is. Just don't do it, okay? Don't do it! I do want to make a side note. If you use unique scripts, like you write all your scripts yourself, I think your channel does appear more unique versus channels who reuse public scripts. Now, controversial Andy, I know. But that's just my opinion if you are serious about your numbers. I just want to reiterate my point about the scripts. I'm not trying to be negative. In fact, there's actually multiple channels, over 50,000 subscribers that actually use free public scripts for the majority of their stuff, which is amazing. We all have a weakness. And if you struggle to write scripts, that's perfectly okay. If you want to stand out, consider hiring a scriptwriter when you get more um, afloat when it comes to making an income, as well as there is a Reddit called ASMR Script Haven, and I believe r slash pillow talk, where there's writers for hire as well as public access scripts. My fourth do, do organize your damn files, number them one to whatever, do anything. You will thank me so much. I had to back up over a hundred audios and I've still not even done my other audios of my type of content. And you must please back them up. Use a USB, use Google Drive, anything, anything. My hard drive failed on me and it could not be repaired. Thankfully, two weeks prior to this, my editor actually ushered me to back up my files and I did it and I actually only lost two videos, which I could recover because I had uploaded them so recently. Back up your files and organize your files. If you number them in the order that you produce them, it is so much easier. Literally one and say it was a ghost audio. Number two, you know, you get the idea. My 
fourth don't for you is do not be hesitant on that block button. I'm serious. I used to panic and worry so much like, oh, what happens? What happens if uh, I upset the person that I'm blocking or what happens if they harass me more? Blah. No, no block. I do not tolerate rude behavior. I don't actually tolerate rude behavior to fellow VAs as well. If you're on Twitter and follow each other and you see someone be rude, unbelievably rude to another VA, just block them yourself. I've had a few, <laughs> I've actually had someone being like, I have no idea why DTL blocked me. And it's quite literally because they were rude as fuck to another VA. Are you surprised? What? No. Just hit him with a block. Don't tolerate it. Don't feed into like any negativity. Just move on. I know it's hard. It, it takes me, heck, sometimes I even still reply because I'm like, I grew up on Xbox. You chat shit back real quick. But honestly, these days I just mute it and my comment section is just positive, overwhelmingly positive because there's no, you know, asshats running amok. <laughs> Unfortunately, I will say you got to grow a backbone and you got to do it fast. You got to do it fast. Do number five. Do have an OC, which is known as original character. For so example, DTL is my original character. And do develop a unique thumbnail look. There's a lot of creators out there. I get it. I really do. How to look unique and stand out is a good question. However, you see this little magical rectangle? You have infinite possibilities on how to make your thumbnails unique and stand out. When you take a peek at mine, what do you notice? You notice the same text, blurred background, and a stark white block behind the text. It's okay to take inspiration from others, but I would highly recommend trying your hardest to find something unique. Areas that you can look at are a color scheme, unique text, placing, a type of way that you use the artwork, stand out, and do not look like everyone else. Seriously, when you click on a video, if you see my thumbnails, you know it's a video from me. But if people kept copying the design, then it muddies the water and things get a bit confusing. Try to be unique, try to stand out. My fifth don't is don't be afraid to put money back into your equipment. My first year of making money was just stabilizing my life. I was quite literally paying off debts um, and it was just insane. And then eventually once I paid them off, I had to invest in new equipment. It was my next upgrades. It was so scary at first saying goodbye to that kind of money. But if you're serious, and you will know deep down in your gut that you will earn that money back. You will use that new microphone you're purchasing. You will use these, um, say, sound pads that you bought, okay? Get your money's worth and make it work. My first microphone was a $50 Tascam. Now, that, don't get me wrong, that's a big investment when you start out at the start. It wasn't particularly good quality, but then I upgraded to a Blue Yeti, which I believe is $100. I will check. And then I got a 3DO for $500 and eventually I've upgraded to my black 3DO, which is $2,000 and I'm quite comfortable using that from here on out. The current microphone I'm talking to you is a Yeti right now, but I do not use this for role plays. This is just me talking to you. At first, when I was investing in these items, as I said, I was nervous not to make the money back, but I knew deep down, I, I did the numbers. When you start making money from AdSense, you will be able to break down and say, okay, statistically, every video I upload, say I make $30. If I'm purchasing a Blue Yeti and it's $100, okay, it takes me four serious role plays in order to make that money back. You can do this kind of math. You will understand this so much better when you get AdSense unlocked and then you can start seeing analytics for what makes you money. Six, do. Do consider other avenues on how you want to make money. Of course, the main contenders are offering more audios or rewards via Patreon is the most common by far. Or you can also have a donation coffee page. When I started out, I had a donation coffee page, but as I stabilized, I removed it because I simply had no more needs for donations as I was a settled content creator, if you will. Um, YouTube memberships is also a thing now, which I didn't have access to that when I first started. If you want to open a Patreon page, do what's manageable. I offer exclusive content on Patreon and it's up to the viewer if they find it worthwhile to support me or just continue to consume my free stuff. There is also offering commissions. I accept commissions via... I accept commissions via Patreon and notify my audience when I do that. 
when you're first starting out, if you're a baby channel, you've not even popped out your first few videos yet. If you have a smaller audience, your value for your time is better to going into free accessible content. There's no point in making exclusive content if you have a small audience. It is just not worth your time. As you get a bigger audience, then perhaps you can work on some exclusives, but try to find a rhythm, a regular upload date, all this kind of stuff. Time is money, and I'm here to give you the quick facts. YouTube also does pay you once you have reached 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. The more videos you have, the more money you can generate in the background. My channel has over 100 YouTube videos, and I, at this moment in time, only upload four videos a month, and I make above the minimum wage. That's great. Four videos a month that I make. Because I'm so established, because I have such a large audience, I no longer have to grind the way I did when I was a smaller channel. I used to make a lot more content, but now I'm comfortable and settled in what I'm doing. It means I can then invest my time into projects, which of course I always have projects ongoing. Try to get settled. Try to find a rhythm that's good for you, okay? Don't number six. Don't promise too much content. Now you're gonna be like, hey, DTL, I'm pretty sure you're guilty of that. Heck yeah, I'm guilty of it. But my community know that I just try my hardest to make it happen and normally do fail, but that's okay. People will shit talk you so hard if you fail. I got food poisoning during a uh, upload a day event called Spooktober. Um, and people said so many negative things because I missed one upload. It was so defeating that I actually publicly released the reason why I couldn't do the very last video on the daily uploads. And there was quite a vocal minority who did not give a shit by all accounts. They just wanted their free content and to go. So that's why if you look at my Twitter, chances are it's just me posting a meme or releasing a video or complaining about demonetization because there by far is a vocal minority that uh that don't care about you they just want the content <laughs> i'm sorry it's very harsh to say but it's very true um however the majority will love you people who subscribe to you will love you and support you type thing a lot of people don't comment that's okay a lot of people won't interact that's okay you might be like oh why aren't people interacting with me on twitter if i've just made it fresh and there's a holds a new followers type thing check out the graph that you get and it'll tell you how many people actually looked at it just because people don't directly comment don't directly like don't directly interact there is still an overwhelming majority who love you and support you and want to keep that content coming. Like I said before though, if you get any shit or any issues, just throw up that mute button on them and you're good to go. My number seventh do is, now this is only a temporary uh, suggestion or recommendation, is that when you first start out and you're trying to get noticed, I no longer do subtitles. At the very start, I used to do subtitles and people were going absolutely nuts and they were so happy about it because hardly anyone ever did it. Um, so consider subtitling your work at the start. You might grab the attention of quite a few people. Um, it helps people also understand your story better and your roleplay aspects of the story so you can evolve a bit more of what the listener is doing to you directly in the roleplay. Um, for example, like he, you could put on screen in the subtitles, he wraps his arms, um, he wraps, what am I trying to say? For example, you go to touch her hair, but she recoils or whatever, just something basically that. Of course, it 100% will add to your editing time. I am not going to sell you a false story. I literally dropped subtitles because it was taking two videos worth of time just to produce and when I did my large subtitles where I had a massive wall of text people didn't like that either so I was like nope subtitles are gone uh <laughs> I've had my fun with them I would not do them again but if you want to stand out at the very start want to make you know a little name for yourself consider giving it a try seventh don't don't get involved in drama you can be a part of the lovely VA community without getting that deep into it, honestly. I prefer to have a professional relationship with the VAs that I've collabed with. I've had the absolute pleasure of over 50 different girls and 
And no, I'm not going to stop collabing anytime soon. But our relationship is exactly that. It is professional. And I think where I speak for both sides, we're okay with that. As I said previously, not all VAs are looking to make best friends for life. People are okay with making an amazing video together than popping off of each other's radars for a while. It's not a ride or die situation. We're all in the same boat at the end of the day. Do consider this an investment project. When you start out, I heavily recommend using resources like Fiverr to order your artwork. Art theft is so commonplace in the community and even I confess I did it way at the start. I am more than happy now to obviously report I commissioned over $10,000 worth of artwork and I order everything now. I deeply regret not having utilized resources. I just didn't know, but I am handing you the knowledge now, okay? There's also an image maker online, I believe it's called Pick Crew, who do allow under certain works of art commercial monetization. But you must try and find them and hunt them down for yourself. I can't be doing that. You got to do it yourself. Or you can just straight up ask artists for permission. For example, go on Twitter, say you want to roleplay a popular anime character. You could message someone who's made fan art of that character and say, hey, I'm a new voice acting channel. I would absolutely love to use your artwork and give you credit. Um, if I do an audio role play along it, you know, you can kind of put it together, put it nicely. Not everyone's going to say yes. If you've just started out, chances are they're going to say no, but there's going to be someone out there that says, oh, you know what? That sounds fun. You know, have fun with it. You, here's the... Use the artwork type deal. When you're looking for artists, as I said, I use Fiverr or you can use Twitter. It's a good way to hunt down some artists. I find the phrase anime art on Fiverr good and anime commissions open on Twitter good. I personally choose to support a variety of artists. I do not go to one artist consistently. However, if you're wanting a very specific look to your channel, you could consider contacting an artist for regular work. It could also help you be more recognizable as well for people when they see your thumbnails. Another option potentially is you could roleplay as people's OCs. A lot of artists produce OCs, original characters, and you could say like, hey, message them again just say hey i absolutely love your artwork i was wondering if i could actually make up a scenario involving your character with their attributes that's a very unique situation so you'd need to actually do your research for that i can however recommend this lovely person on screen that you can see right here um you will be able to see their twitter handle please do consider looking them up because they offered free use artwork that you can use commercial rights and all type thing make money off it so there are resources out there if you look hard enough, okay? I can't do all the heavy lifting for you. You gotta do some of it for yourself. My eighth don't for you is don't steal ideas, but instead be inspired by them. If you ever notice that someone's video is just the perfect topic or theme that you want to cover, but you don't want to look like you're straight up stealing it, stop watching that video right there and then. If you are put in a position where you want to write your own scripts, you might actually accidentally regurgitate what you've heard. I purposely do not watch other VA's content for this reason, because it seems like subconsciously, since I write the majority of my scripts, like the overwhelming majority, I might regurgitate what I've heard and put it into my own words, which people you could argue i'm changing it but seriously i personally stay away from it i'd recommend it's probably not the best idea to watch one video and then go straight into trying to write a script you're gonna end up coming up with stuff okay when you listen to one of my scripts you know it's me because i keep saying my certain phrases over and over again because i wrote it and i repeat what i say so i often say or well or do you know what i mean or you're my number one priority uh, as for stealing themes and titles please don't do it it's a big no-no if it's a generic concept then don't be afraid to do it however if someone comes out with goth tomboy is jealous of your girlfriend then three days later copycat mcgee comes out with emo tomboy is jealous of your girlfriend people are gonna look at you and your channel shifty you are gonna secretly create a bad reputation for yourself okay don't copy but be inspired make something new obviously you're doing the heavy lifting but seriously you want to make it look good you want to make it look juicy collabing is a great way to get connected and get 
shown off at the same time. <laughs> I don't know why I was struggling with that there. Um, okay, my ninth do, I'm wrapping around to credit again. Seriously, do give visual credit if you're using an artwork on screen with their handle. If you're using a script, remember to use their handle and show it on screen. Um, by not leaving visual credit in the video, you are risking just not giving credit in general, which is not a very nice thing to do. It's not. Um, if you had a video that went viral for whatever reason, but your channel just didn't show up next to the video and it got 10 million views, you'd be upset. Okay? Don't do it to others. Don't do to others what you don't want done to you. I have had to scrub my descriptions multiple times, so please, I, I usher you yet again visual credit on screen look i'm giving examples right here look at these juicy examples there's so many my ninth don't now this is a bit lighthearted, so don't take it too seriously if i'm calling you out here okay don't constantly tweet about wanting to collab with people and then do nothing about it instead if you want to collab with someone why not this is what i do why not write the script order the artwork for you both and offer to edit it as well you're asking someone to make time for you, so in turn, you want to be polite as possible and make it as easy for them. How do you think I've managed to collab with so many people? I did the heavy lifting. They're more likely to accept a collab if you made it easy for them. Oh, but DTL, what happens if I get rejected? So? You think I haven't been rejected before? What do you think I do? I A, I cringe in my bed every night because a VA didn't want to collab. B, I move on and find another girl for the job. C, I go out for some smokes and never come back to VA. It's just not a thing. I'm sure that you can handle a little bit of rejection. It's healthy. It builds character, you know. Um, a simple message. Hi, hi X. My name is X and my channel is X. I'm interested in a collab theme of X and I'd like you to be in it with me. I will write the script, order the artwork and edit it all. It would be an exclusive video to my channel, but I'm happy for you to upload the audio file to your Patreon for early access. So for example, they get a bit of a benefit of an early access thing. If you do Patreon, remember this is probably later down the line. Um, collab wise, I would specify it's an exclusive video on your channel. Um, if you're looking to produce just one video specified, it's going to be on your channel. If you're wanting to offer to make a, a collab on their channel, if they're interested, you're doubling the work for yourself. If you're offering the script for that as well. You could offer and just say, if you do want to do a collab on your channel, I'm happy to uh perform the script but i don't have time to make another one for that like you're you're obviously you're doing the heavy lifting but seriously you want to make it look good you want to make it look uh, juicy my 10th do is do have fun this is a beautiful hobby that if you try hard enough and know what you're doing you can sustain yourself if you play your cards right if you find yourself stressed out and miserable doing this stuff Honestly, it might not be for you if you're not having a good time. There's no point in making yourself depressed over this, trying to force something to work that you're not enjoying. Of course, you're probably going to face burnout. You're going to struggle at some points. But if you look at it from afar, are you having a good time or a bad time? Keep that in mind because VAs are just average people too. And you got to look out for yourself, okay? And last, my 10th don't is... Don't forget to have fun. Literally, I'm, I'm repeating again. I cannot stress this enough. Enjoy yourself. It's honestly insane to think that I started my YouTube career with shit posting as a meme, as a meme. Um, and I have paid off my educational debts. I managed to afford the cost of moving out. And then later, I managed to move countries because of VAing. It's all thanks to my viewers. It will keep you humble if you keep looking back and saw where you started from and how far you've come. Honestly, who knows what your channel could look like in a year's time. I think that's all I have time for now. I hope I was able to point you in the right direction. If you have any questions or VA roleplay topics that you would like me to cover, please just throw them down below. I will try my best to report back to you very shortly. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.